All right, let's let's get back into this a little bit. Maybe uh, uh, talk a little bit. You know, you you, you mentioned it uh, briefly around Yugoslavia and and the Bosnia and the Bosnian War. Um, maybe a little bit more about uh, the breakup of Yugoslavia and the ensuing Bosnian War. Yugoslavia, after the Second World War, basically Yugoslavia developed many other countries um, such as Bulgaria, Albania. They joined um, the... um, The world was divided into uh, East and West, meaning Eastern Bloc states belonging to... uh, Under communist influence, Western Bloc states belonging... uh, Being part of the capitalist world, such as West and East Germany, which doesn't exist anymore. So now it's one Germany, but at that time Germany was divided... Whole of Europe was divided. There was the Cold War, as they called it, so basically between communist East and the supporters of the Soviet Union at that time and uh, capitalist West and supporters of the US. So that was the idea. And that time you either belonged there or you belonged here. Um, I grew up in West Germany that time, of course, as I said before. And East Germany was always something hidden, something behind the curtain, you know, behind the Iron Curtain, actually. And it was something that we couldn't just enter. So that made it fascinated for me, fascinating for me. I actually visited Poland that time when it was communist still. And um, I had the chance to visit Poland because I knew somebody from there. Uh, to get visa that time was not an easy thing. So you couldn't just go as a tourist there, but I somehow managed to get it. And I went to Poland and I was really um, um, fascinated by the, uh, the difference that there were amongst Europeans. That brought me further into the other part of Eastern Europe, into further south, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia at that time, and Albania. And Albania was totally landlocked. There was nothing. Nobody could go in. I mean, there was not even a visa you could get. But Yugoslavia, we used to drive through Yugoslavia every time. Yugoslavia was a very big country, actually, a massively big country. And I remember when I used, with my parents, we used to go from Germany, driving down through Austria, through Yugoslavia to go to Greece. I remember how my father was always saying, oh, my God, as soon as we entered Yugoslavia, the border, he was like, oh, my God, another 20 hours through this terrible country. He found it um, um, because he was a driver, was the only driver. So he had to drive through Yugoslavia more than 20 hours, although Germany was quick, Austria was quick, and then finally you're in Greece. But you had to drive through this terrible monster called Yugoslavia. And... And that's all I knew about Yugoslavia. And that's what Yugoslavia was for us. Yugoslavia was nothing else but a big communist country, which was terrible to drive to and through, and it took us hours to go through to arrive, to reach Greece. Now, we had never heard of Muslims in Yugoslavia. We had never heard of anything else, Bosnians, all this stuff. It was all new. It was like, what is all that? Um, but it was an entity that actually was a multinational entity. The Serbs were the ones running Yugoslavia. We did not know that that time because Yugoslavians were actually supposed to be one people, okay? Or everybody who was living in Yugoslavia was a Yugoslavian. So that was supposed to be one ethnicity, but still they were actually divided into different ethnicities, into Serbs, Bosnians, Albanians, and so on and so on. And this all came out with the war in the 1990s when we found out actually that there is uh, a difference between Bosniaks who are mainly Muslims, then Serbs, who are mainly Orthodox, Catholic, Croatians, and so on and so on. So what divides them is their religion, but also their cultural and linguistic background. Although they all spoke, um, in general, the Yugoslavian Serbo-Croatian language, um, which Serbs and Croats uh, and Bosnians understand, still there are differences. The Albanians, for example, um, their language and their culture is very different. Okay, Albanian is not the same like Serbo-Croatian. It's not even close to it. Albanian is a language on its own, like Greek is a language on its own. Whereas Croatian, Serbian, Bosnian are actually all, uh, in a way, the same language. Okay, so all these things we didn't know. And now we have all these different countries that developed in the 1990s. Between 1992 and 1995, there was this terrible war where Yugoslavia broke up. These six or seven countries developed, amongst them three Uh, or even four, I would say, Muslim countries. The main one was Bosnia. Then we have Albania, of course. Kosovo being a country which is more than 90% Albanian Muslims. So a country which actually has more than 90% Muslims. And this is in Europe, okay? And then, of course, you have the country of Turkey, which was not part of 
of, uh, of Yugoslavia, of course, but it's all the way in the south next to Greece, the country of Turkey, which is more than 99% Muslim. So we have Muslim countries on the Balkan Peninsula with Muslim majorities, which can influence Europe and should influence Europe. Bosnia has developed into an, an, an let's call it Islamic hub for Europe. And it might sound a little, for some people, it might sound a little bit um, crazy, but what it is, Bosnia and the Bosnian Muslims, um, Sarajevo, for example, as a capital, have developed into um, a country which clearly um, supports Islam as, um, as a faith, clearly is European. I would even say more European than I am. I mean, if you look at me, many people think that I'm Middle Eastern. Um, whereas if you look at Bosnians, you see them blonde, blue eyed. You know, tall people, you really think that they're somewhere from the north or eastern Europe and they're actually Balkan people. And they're both Muslims. And this um, might change the perspective of people, of course, then, you know. And not all Muslims are dark, um, darker people, Middle Eastern looking people. So the Bosnians have developed into their country, into a, a hub of Islam in Europe, of European Islam. And this, I think, makes it again fascinating and interesting. I, I was in Bosnia several long time ago and uh, since the war actually um, I'm interested again to go down to see how Sarajevo has developed nowadays but from what I know and, 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 and have read and have found out it has developed into a, um, um, a, a center for European Islam in a positive way I don't want to say Islam is Islam there's is no European and Asian Islam but what I'm saying is it has become a center for the European Muslims and I think it's very, very interesting to see. Actually. Absolutely. Maybe I'll uh, join you on that trip to uh, Bosnia. <laughs> Shala. Shala. It's, Shala. it's great. Now, you know, you, you talk about uh, Islam being Islam.